When I first saw Mirror's Edge, I automatically wanted to play it. The game has a very distinct visual style. It features off-white environments, which are accentuated by use of primary colors. This game was very different than anything that was being released at the time. When I first played the game, it was the art style that got me into it. It came out in 2008, but even a decade later, it still holds up visually. Many of the game's locations still inspire and are recreated by many game artists using the new game engines. Recently, I had the chance to play the game again, and I wanted to better understand the color use in the game. So in this tutorial, we're going to dive in deep into the anatomy of color, so you can mimic the art style used in Mirror's Edge in your own work. Now, as a small side note, this following tutorial, like all the tutorials that I do, are based on my own experience, opinions, and conclusions. So nothing here in this tutorial reflects what the developer or the publisher might have intended or didn't intend as they were creating the game. So these are just my opinions only and the conclusions I've reached. So let's jump in and the first thing I want to cover is the colors that were used. The game deliberately limited its color palette to just a handful of colors that I used and reused throughout the entire game. Reusing of colors creates unity and by limiting the color palette you don't have to decide which colors you should use because you only have just a few that you decided on. So here are the colors that were used. White, red, orange, blue, lime green, teal, yellow, black, and in one location, pink. But it was only used once in the flight chapter and I don't consider that color as part of the color palette as it was never reused. So decide on the color palette that you are going to use and then use those colors throughout your entire game or a single level. Next is to start with white. Mirror's Edge uses this approach and starts everything with a neutral off-white color, more of a lighter gray. And this reminds me when you use developer textures during the blocking phase. There is a certain aesthetic with clean, pristine, untextured environments. And I often like the blocking look more than I do the final textured piece. Now in Mirror's Edge, you still have your normal map, a roughness map, but everything starts off with this neutral color. And it gives you a neutral shade, which then you can use to highlight certain elements with specific primary colors from the color palette. Next we have the importance of red. Red color has many meanings such as aggression, violence, fire. In Mirror's Edge it means importance. The color red is used to guide the player towards their next location and in the game it's called runner's vision. Certain objects in the environment are highlighted in red, which direct you where to go next. This includes doors, railings, ledges, ladders, AC vents, pipes, valves, boxes, ropes, buttons, and landing pads. In addition to highlighting certain elements, certain props, red is also used for levels landmarks, such as these cranes and they tell you which direction you should head within the level. Now there are a few locations later in the game where the entire place is colored in red. And it becomes more difficult to see the runner's vision red. But I think this was done intentionally to make you look around and not rely on the color red to guide you. So it was probably teaching you to make your own way 
and explore the environment. So if you're going to use a specific color to highlight elements that are important inside your environment, inside your level, make sure it's a color that stands out. And it's very effective when you use red very sparingly just to highlight where you want the player to look. But you can do so with other colors depending on the overall color of your environment. So you don't have to use red and you can use any other color as long as it's something that stands out and calls your attention. And if you continue to use that same color, you teach the player to respond to it. Next is the use of a warm color palette. Warm colors consist of reds, yellows, oranges, and beige cream colors. Warm color palette produces an emotional response in the player that is positive, optimistic, happy, inviting, and enthusiastic. In Mirror's Edge, exterior daytime locations feature warm color palette. Interior locations that are lit with an external light, sunlight, also have a warm color palette. These locations include the offices, the mall, the atrium, and the packaging area. So pretty much anytime you are outside in the daytime or inside but that interior is lit with an external natural light, it uses a warm color palette. So you could do the same thing in your environments. Anytime you have an external location that is daytime or an internal location but it's lit with a natural external light, use warm colors. Use reds, yellows, orange, and beige creamy colors. Of course, warm color palette doesn't fit all locations. And you may want to use a cool color palette. A cool color palette consists of blues, greens, and grays. It produces an emotional response within the player that can be calming, relaxing, soothing, or it can be cold, distant, sad, sick, and depressing. In Mirror's Edge, all underground environments that are not exposed to external light have a cool color palette. These include going down into the maintenance chambers, underground maintenance area, subway tunnels, Many connecting hallways within the game contain cool color palettes, such as lime green, blues, and grays. Also, external nighttime locations use cool color palette. The boat level contains exterior and interior locations, and both feature a cool color palette of blues and greens. Here is the boat exterior and the boat interior. Last level, the shard, uses primarily a cool color palette consisting of blues. Here's the shard level exterior where you start. As you continue going forward, you get into the interior pipe room. Very cool color palette. And the mainframe room. So to use this in your own work, decide which location you want the player to feel cold, distant, and then use a cool color palette. Once you've used a warm and a cool color palette, you can start playing with warm versus cool contrast. This creates a complement color scheme. It's where you take two colors that are opposite on the color wheel and use them to light or texture the environment. So if you take the color wheel, the opposite color across it is the complementary color. The most common examples are green and red, blue and orange, and yellow and violet. The key is to not use cool and warm colors equally. You want to determine if the environment will be primarily cool or warm. And then use the complement color sporadically as a way to establish visual harmony and interest. So you want to keep the ratios of cool versus warm between 90 and 10, 80 and 20, or 70 and 30. And in Mirror's Edge, 
cool versus warm is done through the entire game. And you can do this with lighting or textures. So here are examples in Mirror's Edge where cool versus warm is done with lighting. Underground vents, in a subway tunnel, and inside the building construction. Cool versus warm can also be done with textures. All exterior daytime environments use blue and orange texture combinations. Some interiors use blue and orange as well, such as the subway station. New Eden Mall interior uses combinations of light and texture complementary colors. And last level, the shard, plays with cool versus warm color palette. It combines the use of orange and blue throughout the entire chapter. And there are entire sections that are blue, orange, or both. Most of the locations in the shard uses a cool blue color. Then some sections of the map uses a warm color palette. And then towards the end of the chapter, it combines cool versus warm into one location, such as here at the rooftops, where it's predominantly blue, with a highlight of warm orange color for the doorways where you start and where you need to go. And of course the finale, it also combines cool versus warm using yellow and orange with blue. And this complementary color scheme is very common not only in Mirror's Edge, but in all other games that you've played and many artworks that you see. And to do this in your own environments, you just simply pick two colors that are opposite on the color wheel, then use one as the dominant color and the other color to complement to highlight important areas and or create visual interest. And last, to create environments using color like Mirror's Edge, is to use single dominant color for interiors. Most interior locations in the game use a single dominant color. This creates almost a monochromatic color palette, and it helps to accentuate that location. This is not counting the important red color used as a gameplay element. These single dominant colors include orange, green, blue, red, yellow, and teal. This creates a strong exterior versus interior contrast, as most exteriors use multiple colors within the same location. And remember, you can do this both with textures, lighting, or both. There's also one more color that is used in the game, and that is black. But black is only used within interior locations, and it's used very seldom. It only appears in just a few sections of the game, and black was used for pipes, for some of the rooms and hallways, and for the floor. So I hope you learned a lot and picked up a few tips, not only how to use color and create environments like Mirror's Edge, but also in color theory.